you believe that poverty is the state of mind? 100%. It, it only it, it, manifests into a physical form. It only takes mm. a physical form mm. uh, when you start lacking things. But poverty exists with a person, whether they have money or not. You can, you can even give someone a million dollars yeah. and he wastes it in two months. Now that is poverty that has wasted the money. It wasn't just a problem that he didn't have money. No, he doesn't have the capacity to hold it and manage it. Before I leave this end, I want to be known as Africa's number one bragger. Please add that to my name, Wadamaya, Africa's number one bragger. The guy who brags about the beauty of Africa. The guy who goes around to brag about successful Africans. Yes, I take pride in that. Believing in the motherland, celebrating every African I am I I'm excited am. because I made it to Uganda and I can't wait to show you why it's called the Pearl of Africa. I am here to brag about a young African. Is he a millionaire or billionaire? No, actually I may be I may be moving to a billion dollars. I have never heard of this guy. But when I landed in Uganda, I asked my community that, hey, which Ugandan entrepreneur do you guys want me to feature? And most of the people recommended Ham. Uh -huh. I'm by the names of Mr. And Mr. Chugundu, a Ugandan, a businessman trading in real estate, and now moving largely into agro processing and value addition. Uh, I was born in Uganda. I've lived in Uganda all my life. Yeah. If you've never left the country, no, I travel in and out, but... Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about, like, you, you left Uganda to study abroad. No, 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 no. All I've done and all I've achieved, I've achieved in Africa. Actually, I think I'm a living example of the fact that you can make it in Africa. How is a real estate developer. But developing residential homes is not his core business. So, what is the core business then? No, I have quite a lot of commercial properties. Uh, in Uganda, uh, in various areas, uh, from commercial structures to now real estate housing structures for, for, for residential. Mm. I have quite a number of projects, quite a number. Can you believe that this guy built the replica of the White House right here in Uganda? When you look at the United States, I would say one of the best elements that has penetrated the African mind is Hollywood. Because our young children think that what is in Hollywood, that's the way they should live. And the signature mark of 90% of American movies is the White House. Yeah. So I was like, um, what can I do with the resources I have that can get the majority of my fellow Africans and Ugandans per se start believing in themselves and the fact that we can make it here? And I was like, if I'm to put up my headquarters, let me make it like the White House. To give them confidence. Someone passes it and is like, wow, it's just like the, the one in the States. So, you know, the mind is key. His house looks like a castle. When you look at the house I, I built, I live in a very big house on 11 acres. Yeah. But I, you know, a person needs only one room. I have like eight cars, but you can drive one car at a time. But why? That big house, a person can only live in one room. Person can only live on one bed, and even on the bed, you can only stay on one side of the bed. <laughs> Pick the soft contained, and, and you can sit as it on sauna, steam bath. You have a sauna still in the bedroom? Yeah, we have sauna, steam bath, and you know. To me, I thought this guy has achieved everything. But when I asked him, what is your biggest achievement, he told me, establishing this agro-processing business right here in Uganda by adding value to the raw materials they produce in the country. You don't think that's incredible? No, like you've seen, uh, you've got a chance to move around my projects and I think all my projects are big. But agro-processing and value addition is going to be my biggest project because you see, our economy is small mm. as Uganda. Mm. And my aspirations and projections are big. Mm. So if I penetrate and take 
agro processed products beyond Uganda to the big economies where we can sign contracts in billions mm. of dollars. I think I'll spread bigger and better and I'll be able to remit reasonable amounts of money or draw back reasonable amounts of money into the outgrowers who are Ugandan. So my plan forward is not individual but communal. In Ham Palms Villas, you got a football pitch. As you can see, I just scored a goal that you've never seen in your entire life. Which means that in this Villas, they got a football pitch. But he could be satisfied with a football pitch that he has built in his own estate. But can you believe it? This young guy is building a modern stadium in the city of Kampala. Like you can serve a lot of projects running and putting up a stadium for $200 million. Is it a private stadium? No, actually, the main effect of the stadium, it's, it's the illustration to my fellow Ugandans that if I can do it, they can equally do it. And if we can independently and from an individual perspective pull off such a development, then we can spearhead development of Uganda. He is young, a 39 year old, almost worth a billion? I know the question that is going through your mind, just like what is going through my mind is, what did you do different from your age mates or your peers? Reason, because you see, I'm constant on this thing of reason, because that's, that's all. <laughs> that's all there is if you want to solve a problem. When God created humanity, uh, in fact, God created us naked, but with a brain. It is only through the brain that we manage to transform over a given period of time. Now we are flying, everything is on the phone, uh, ICT. Yeah. These are all, you know, it is evidence of our reasoning capacity as humans. So when you ask me, Ham, what do you think you do different from others that has mm. made you achieve mm. what you achieved? Yeah. It's just reason. If we want to develop and elevate Africa, I think we should attack the mind of the Africans. For all that Hams has been able to achieve in this very short time, if you ever ask me what is the major challenge, I would definitely tell you about finance. But to Hams? I would say negativity. People are so negative. Even if you are doing something to their advantage, some may do it out of ignorance, but the majority do it out of hate. So that leaves me wondering, how shall we pull up when we fight so much to keep each other down? How does not grant interviews, but he gave me the opportunity to speak to him for the first time on camera. I think I've made it in life. And because of this, can you all do me a favor and like this video now? I noticed that most of you watch the videos without liking. Come on. Thank you. But hey, if today is your first time seeing this annoying face on your screen, I'm your one and only annoying village boy on a journey to change the negative narrative of Africa by celebrating African excellence. Please subscribe and support our journey. Thank you so much. Now, let's dive into the video because I am inspired and I know you will be inspired. I admire. Everyone calls you Ham. Yeah. But I'm going to call you Mr. Ham. Yeah. That's Mi fine. Uh, are you made in Africa products? 100%. I'm How? Ugandan and proudly African. All I've done and all I've achieved, I've achieved in Africa. Actually, I think I'm a living example of the fact that you can make it in Africa. So why the doubt that it's not possible to make it, make it in Africa? Uh, actually, I think that is a little bit wide because um, it all comes down to one element, I think, which is reason. For me, I believe uh, we're a direct reflection of our reasoning capacity. I would ask, what do you think is the difference between the West and us, despite the fact that Africa holds 80% of the world resources, yet 
exploitation takes place in the West and they claim they donate to Africa simply because we haven't figured out on how to utilize the prevailing resources we have at hand naturally to exploit them towards our own prosperity. So success and failure at the end of the day, just like I wrote a book, Success and Failure Based on Reason and, Re and Reality. For me, I believe reason is one of the governing elements of someone's capacity to articulately analyze what is before them and see how they can make it towards their own prosperity and the society at large. So the distance and gap between success and failure is merely reason. Are you trying to say Africa is poor because you are not reasoning? No reason is, is a little bit deep because uh, if I take it from a general perspective, let us take the world. I think all present, past and future discoveries of humanities hmm. are a mere, or will be a mere reflection of the reasoning capacity of humanity or people of that particular period in time. Reason governs everything. When God created man, he created us with a mind. For me, I believe success and failure, it all starts and ends in the mind. There are limited resources in the world to satisfy man is unlimited ones. So it's how someone utilizes mm. the limited resources towards their own progress, prosperity, and the societies where they live. What's your definition for success? Survival can be success. A man can su uh, successfully survive on earth. So success is a little bit broad. Ability to live within your means and uh, ability to manage your life and solve your problems can be an element of success. But uh, as humans, we, we move hmm. for this success where you build empires, a lot of finances. Are you talking about that kind of success? I think when it comes to success to so many, uh, I mean the word successful people, I mean we say successful people are people who have been able to accumulate wealth. Mm. Yeah, someone could say that Ham is a successful man, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you see, for me I believe ability to reason is an element of success. Because when you look at Africa and the West, I think the difference between Africa and the West is merely reason. Because you see, they have simply out reasoned us. Something as simple as that. Because uh, you'd hear me talk about reason, but just like I defined it in my book, actually I wrote two books, Success and Failure Based on Reason and Reality, another book which says reason as the world masterpiece. Why do I say reason as the world masterpiece? In life, we all have challenges. Yeah. And we all think. Thinking is basic, but reasoning is deep. When you think, you act fast and short term. When you reason, you articulate deeply and act long term. That's why we see most of African programs, even when it comes to our countries, uh, we don't tend to take the long term drive. We want short term. Mm -hmm. So. Just like I defined reason in my book, reason is one's ability to deeply, articulately analyze the prevailing circumstances. Let it be an element of a challenge or a problem in order for that person to grasp and understand it in its totality within realistic perimeters, which gives them the ability to forge a corresponding solution to such a problem. a problem. You know, a productive continuous chain of one's ability to solve life challenges is what is transformed into progress and prosperity at the end of that day. What problem are you solving in Uganda? No, when you talk about Uganda, it's a little bit big. But it what problems have I solved in my life? To some extent, yeah. our statuses and what we possess may it be a direct reflection of our reasoning capacity. If you ask me, Ham, what have you done to get where you are today? I'll give you an answer. Reason. Is that what you did differently? Because you're so young, and what you've been able to achieve, 
I think my next question will be, what did you do different from your age mates or your peers? Reason, because you see, I'm constant on this thing of reason, because that's, that's all. Hmm. That's all there is if you want to solve a problem. When God created humanity, in fact, God created us naked, but with a brain. It is only through the brain that we manage to transform over a given period of time. Now we are flying, everything is on the phone, uh, ICT. Yeah. These are all, you know, it is evidence of our reasoning capacity as humans. So when you ask me, Ham, what do you think you do different from others that has mm. made you achieve mm. what you achieved? Yeah. It's just reason. If we want to develop and elevate Africa, I think we should attack the mind of the Africans. If we can get Africans to reason, I think we shall have solved all the problems of Africa. If Africa holds all the world majority of the world resources, yet we are still donated to up to date. We take resources in raw materials, minerals, and they are brought back in form of peanuts in donations. What stops us from utilization of the available resources and their exploitation towards or a finished product in line or in the direction of our prosperity? What is stopping us? The resources are here now. What is stopping us? You are not reasoning enough? But according to you, what do you think is the problem of Africa? I think we haven't exploited our reasoning capacity to forge a way forward for our continent. Because at the end of the day, if you ask me what does Africa need to do to develop, hmm. I will tell you things like unity. But it takes reason for us to unify. We cannot unify physically if we haven't unified in the mind. We talk about borders, but uh, these borders are only physical. The real borders of Africa are in our minds. If we agreed mentally that we take out the borders, I think they would be out. But we fail to reason even on the simplest things. Africa would, be one, would, would have one unified flag. Africa would have a free trading zone. Africa would be, would be traveling on one passport. Why do I need a, to cross from, from here to South Africa through a visa? All these things, you know, the limiting factor of our ability to grow despite the resources we hold as a continent is reason. You know, someone might ask what is reason, what is reason, but you know, you see, reason is so simple and so precise that its strength lies in its, its softness. Actually, it takes reason to reason. Mm. And yet, almost we have all the capacity to adjust and kickstart our reasoning capacity. The books I wrote were known to tell you where Ham has been, how much he has achieved, what is he looking to achieve. No. These books were made to kickstart a person's reasoning capacity. To make you think what am I doing wrong? How can I explore the prevailing circumstances towards my own progress? Mm. Um, let's go back to how it all started. What was your first ever business that you invested in? When it comes to my personal progress, I started as a young man, immediately after my uh, A-level classes, before joining campus, I started trading. First and foremost, my family has a, a trading background, but I started really small, trading in garments on retail scale, uh, mainly ladies' garments and, and bags. Then uh, I moved into to another, to another uh, bigger scale of the same. I started getting these things from Thailand, Hong Kong, and China and selling them not only to Uganda domestically, but also regionally to Burundi, business people from Burundi, Rwanda, Sudan, Congo. This is a whole 
council center, eh? okay. people from the village, different areas of Uganda, central, north, everywhere, they come and shop their stock from here, hmm. which they take back and sell on retail. So that's why you see a lot of people, eh? most people are coming from the villages to, to trade okay. on wholesale, they go back and sell on retail. I think I, I even saw people from different African countries, I saw Kenyans. Yeah, we, we, have, we have Congolese, we have Kenyans, we have Tanzanians, we have Sudanese, people from different East African countries come and shop here and wow. take back to their countries. Uh, as my capital grew, grew, I moved into real estate putting up a few commercial structures. Now I've moved into industrialization, like you can serve a lot of projects running. I'm putting up a stadium for $200 million. I'm setting up 500 houses, an estate of 500 houses. I'm setting up uh, um, agro-processing industries. So I'm doing quite a lot. Welcome to Nakivibo Stadium, the only stadium that was designed, built, and funded by Ugandans. That's incredible, man. When you're walking around and you see what you've been able to achieve, how does that make you feel? Actually, as an element of reason, I don't take too much pride in what I've achieved because uh, the reality is what I've achieved, I already have. Otherwise, if you focus too much on what you have within perimeters of reason, then it denies you the drive to stray for what you haven't achieved yet. I don't think it is an element of reason to take too much pride in, in, in what you hold. Really? Yeah. But I, I mean, in, in Africa, people who make it always want to let us know that they've made it. But what I have, I have. Whether I'm proud or not, it is there. You see, as a young African, when I see a fellow young African who has been able to achieve so much success in a short time, we tend to hate on them, thinking that, okay, how did this guy accumulate his wealth? You know, we tend to attribute it to other sources. I don't know, has anyone ever? I mean, yeah, negativity is one of the limiting factors of progress in any society. And trust me, Africans at large are too negative. They always want to pull down wherever they see going up. But you see, that goes back to the mind. It is an element of inhabited reason. Because maybe if I'm up, I can pull you down. Hmm. I can pull you up. Hmm. I can't pull you up when we are both on the ground. But you see, they don't think that way. At the end of the day, they always fight too much to pull you down. And if you ask me, where do I get pride? Am I proud of what I've achieved? Yeah, to some extent. If young people in Africa mm. look up to me mm. in what I've achieved. Because you see, success and failure cannot be limited to an individual to some extent. You learn this with time. Mm. In fact, prosperity or progress in a poor society becomes more of a liability than an asset after some time. Because people look at you and they're like, you see what? Harm has got our resources. Maybe the resources we have present would be enough if all of us had equal shares. But how come he has too much and we have less? So they start hating on you. But you don't hate back. As a reasonable member of society, you start thinking, what can I do to improve the lives of those around me? That is where you find, um, like we have a problem, majority of Africans are leaving the country, going abroad. This has been brought by our education systems that were impo imported and imposed. An education system is supposed to provide corresponding solutions or build the society, the young generation, mm. with the capacity to solve problems within the prevailing circumstances. But these imposed, imported and imposed education systems don't address our problems as Africans the way they are on ground. That is why when majority of them finish studying, they are only thinking about one thing. How do I go abroad? abroad. In fact, I would say we blame uh, slavery. But there are more Africans willingly leaving the country today, going abroad, moreover, qualified ones with degrees than they were when they were being taken on chains. What does it mean? That we've been out reasoned mentally. Slavery never left Africa. It was simply upgraded from physical slavery to mental slavery. And that is the problem we have. So 
the worst are successfully outprisoned Africans. We can, uh, our politicians, uh, I've, I've seen a lot of motivational speakers, political speakers, uh, they talk about how the West has uh, exploited us, they talk about how they've made us suffer, they talk about, you know, they keep criticizing the West on what they've done wrong for us to fail, but they haven't talked about our inability to reason. An African hates an African more than he can hate any foreign person. Why? We have even failed to appreciate our identity as Africans. Identity is an element of reason. Hmm. Simply identifying yourself and saying, you know what, I'm an African man. And in Africa is where I belong. For me, I would, um, with the kind of man I have, I would move and, uh, and move to the West. But that is betrayal, I can't live with it. But why do I do all that the way you saw it? The modern... To illustrate to my fellow Africans and Ugandans, look here. What you see in the States, we can equally do it. Here. If I can get more Ugandans and Africans believing in themselves as an element of reason, together we can lift this continent up. But Something as, as simple as believing in our originality and character and the fact that we are Africans mm. and it is our responsibility as Africans to develop this country has failed, then we have even failed to take the first step. <laughs> Mr.